G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's Friday afternoon here in Australia. Market continues to go down, but something very interesting on the Bitcoin chart that we'll get to shortly uh, will hopefully give us an indication of where we might go. Because the truth is no one really knows where we're going to go. It's all just a bit of a guess, but what we like to consider a somewhat educated guess <coughs> on occasions. Alright, excuse me, still a little bit crook, but uh, getting a little bit better. All right, Bitcoin dominance risen a little bit. So getting back up into the 43%, which is nice. Volume down. Again, that's to be expected considering people are selling. And gas price is still hovering around that $4 though. So not exactly cheap, but not exactly super expensive anyway. But <clears throat> yeah, not cheap. That's the one we got to look at most of all. All right, so again, the market's down 2.9, nearly 3% overall. So generally, you're probably going to see a lot of selling. But there are always outliers. I mean, have a look at Solana up 13.4% in the last 24 hours. So that's not too bad. But is that the best performer in the top 100? What's done the best considering the market is down? Well, there we go. It was Solana and good Lord, safe moon far out. It's up 8.79%. And this number here has changed from a two to a three. I've seen this happen uh, once before. It changed from a two to a three. It didn't last long. Then this three went back to a two, but I don't think I've seen the numbers any bigger. So, yeah. A lot of bad news, uh, a lot of bad publicity, I should say, about Safe Moon. I've never really looked into it myself, but for, excuse me, everything I've kind of read and heard, a lot of people seem to think it's a scam uh, and it's a Ponzi and it's got all these other issues. Uh, I don't know, but just the fact that so many people have said it's no good has had me very hesitant, and I've never bought any. I probably should do my own research into it and have a little bit of a look, but for me, yeah, usually where there's smoke, there's fire is what they say, but look, not always. Sometimes it's people just simply don't understand what they're talking about. Maybe Safe Moon is something like that, but for me, I just haven't bought any. I don't recommend it, not that I ever offer you financial advice. I just, yeah, again, too much bad uh, vibes and you know news around it for me to want to get in but look nine percent nicely done Ravain up four percent cello terra luna still doing all right uh hanging around that kind of 30 ish dollar mark thereabouts and then we're really starting to get into the stable coin so not a not a lot of gains at all and that's to be expected considering the market's down so much <clears throat> excuse me all right what about losses then i'm guessing this probably might be a little bit brutal uh, not as bad as what I thought, just a lot of them. So near protocol down 11%, Dash down 11%, uh, Phantom down 10%, Mana, Mana, sorry, down 10%, and Audius uh, down just a little bit under 10%. And then we can see a lot of high digit, high single digit uh, losses there across the board. But we've got to remember the markets were pumping for almost a month. This was, you know, not unexpected. It's just, you know, Again, as I said before, if anyone ever tells you they know exactly what's about to happen, take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> they might actually know what's about to happen at this one stage, but they're not always going to know what's going to happen. But it's it's too hard to know. The market's so big, so many different things could come. There's so many different players. You know, we can all have a bit of a rough guess of what's going to happen, uh, but that's generally what it is, you know. Look, some people use TA, and I do use TA. I'm not going to say that I don't. But TA is only good until it's not. TA is not 100%. Nothing's 100%. That's what I mean. You always need to take TA with what's happening you know, around the world, environmentally, uh, monetary-wise, politically-wise. You know, There's all these different things that have to be taken into account. And again, I'm not trying to downplay TA. I, I use it, but I, it's not my be-all and end-all. I don't just go, all right, well, the TA says this is happening, so that's got to be what's happening. No, it's a lot of other things taken into account because plenty of TA experts were saying Bitcoin's got to go back down and retest 20,000 before it can ever go up again. Well, it's gone back up again, but is it a dead cat bounce? Which it totally could be. But I want to show you something on the Bitcoin chart now. And I did mention this the other day. Look where Bitcoin has come. The other day we were sort of up here and I said I wouldn't be surprised if we sort of come down and retest this channel that uh, we've been in for, you know, since March last year, uh, when the big uh, crash happened, we've been in this upwards trending channel. 
again, travelled out of it, above it for a while, which is good. Travelled out of it, below it, which was uh, a little bit bearish. And now, also, look what it's meeting up perfectly with. 200-day moving average and pretty much this upwards trending channel. Looks like it's bouncing off it almost perfectly right now. And I literally said this about two days ago uh, in my stream that I thought it was definitely possible that we'll come down here, bounce off here and start to slowly make our way up. Now we'll have to wait and see. I could be wrong. This is just right at the moment. We need to see what happens over the rest of the weekend. Do we continue to go down? Some people are saying we've got to get down to around about sort of $44,000. Uh, again, other people are saying this was a dead cat bounce and look it could be this could be You know the spring gets everyone excited and then no it starts to fall off could this now become Something like this are we now going into another Wyckoff distribution phase? Before we have another big sell-off is this a Wyckoff distribution phase to again have another sell-off? Definitely possible something we got to keep an eye out for because look, we had here a high came down, another high came down, another high came down. So we had a high came down, another high came down, another high, and now is this all getting ready to simply run over uh, and fall off the side, basically. Definitely something that could happen. Is it going to happen? Oh, that's what it comes down to. Again, this is, this is a guess. I'd like to think a somewhat educated guess, not a full expert guess because I, I don't consider myself an expert, but I've been here for a little while. I think we're probably going to hold around about this line and continue upwards. I don't think the bull market's over yet, but there's a lot of big players here now. And when you know you see the fear and greed index, well, actually, let's go have a look at that. Fear and greed index, where are we? Tools. I mean, we were in the 70s. We're still in the 70s. So there's still a lot of greed at the moment. Now, this doesn't mean automatically when it's in the green that it has to, you know, flip over and become bearish again. But this is a good indication that at some stage we probably will because we don't stay in the green forever. Now, we can stay there for prolonged periods. We've been in the green for, you know, probably, I mean, last month we were about neutral. But last week uh, and, you know, some we've been in the green. So, yeah, just beware. All right, now let's move on to a couple of stories. There's not a whole lot of stories going on at the moment, but I thought this one was interesting, particularly as I'm an Australian. So surveillance state is what they're calling Australia right now. Australian police given sweeping new hacking powers. So this bill would allow spy agencies to modify, copy or delete your data with a data disruption warrant. Collect intelligence on your online activities with a network activity warrant also, they can take over your social media and other online accounts and profiles with an account takeover warrant. I don't see the problem with this if it's done right. you got to think about the day and age that we're in these days. If you want to get to criminals, social media is where it's at. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like You go after their Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts and all the rest of it, you know, Almost everybody has those kind of accounts. Now, not all crooks do, so that doesn't work. But yeah, go after their social media. You'll be able to get you know who their links are, who's been following them, and who's been saying what. I have no issues with this, provided it's done right. Now, this part, though, is somewhat worrying. The warrants could be issued by a member of the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. And they have said it's outrageous that these warrants won't come from a judge or a, uh, a superior court. So i.e. a uh, Supreme Court or something like that. Now that part is a little bit concerning, but again, it's sometimes it's hard to get a hold of a judge at certain times. Uh, and you know they've got a whole lot of things going on themselves. Uh, I know quite often they have other people handle warrants for them rather than actual judges, but they are acting on behalf of a judge. So while it's not exactly a judge, uh, it's still essentially coming from the uh, same sort of place. So yeah, I don't have any problems with these. If the police are coming after you 99% of the time, I think you probably have done something wrong. Now, I'm not saying always, but most of the time if police are looking at you, it's probably because you have done something wrong. 
or they at least suspect that you've done something wrong which is you know how police operate if they suspect you're guilty of something they're probably going to come talk to you and have a look at you but if you've done nothing wrong you don't have to worry they're not going to be able to take over your media accounts and all the rest of it on uh, purely suspicion they would need a little bit more than simple suspicion to get this kind of stuff they nearly need uh, sort of belief that have to be a whole lot of maybe some people would say oh but that's all circumstantial evidence but that's how they get that they're not simply just going to walk into some courthouse or go talk to someone and say I want I want a warrant to take over all of this stuff because uh, the person Jay walked and we reckon they're doing a whole lot more it takes a whole lot more uh, effort uh, and information to get those kind of warrants so I'm quite sure of that it's not that easy so I'm not too worried about this and this isn't really crypto related but in saying that it could be crypto related because then they're gonna have the warrants and the powers to take over uh, your crypto accounts and all sorts of things so yeah I don't think that makes Australia a surveillance state I think that makes Australia a safer state we've generally got you know pretty good police here in Australia we haven't had too many you know major dramas with policing organizations around Australia and I'm not saying we haven't had any there's definitely been things that have happened that weren't great but you know they're not as bad as some are in other parts of the world and we need to be thankful for that I'm a firm believer in we need you know rules and regulations we just don't need to be overruled and over regulated so yeah I believe you know I'm a fan of police in sort of general but uh, in principle I would say more in principle that rather than in general sometimes you know the, the law is not perfect it never will be and we can definitely look at ways to make it better but I am for this uh, you know I want there to be good powers for any you know law enforcement agency and it doesn't have to simply be police you know it can be the tax man and all that to go after criminals people who are doing the wrong thing we want them to you know basically be have to answer for their crimes and particularly if they're targeting you know innocent people and things like that all right nfts the 15 most expensive nfts ever sold i mean these just continue to grow they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you know where is the top of nfts oh, i couldn't really tell you but what i did find interesting was number one the prices and a couple of the nfts themselves so we know number one every day so people's uh, first 5,000 day, uh, 5, days in crypto went for 69 million dollars that is quite a lot of money number two was a crypto punk we know crypto punks have been quite popular so 7,523 went for 11.8 million dollars number three another crypto punk went for 7.56 million dollars now we can go number four is crypto punk now number five was a little bit different crossroads uh this one i thought was uh interesting so justin sun got this this was by people and it's uh looking at the effects of you know all the uh cfcs and things like that are that are put in a uh, global warming things like that god i was struggling couldn't think of the word there all the pollutions and that that are being put into the ozone layer and things like that uh, and destroying uh you know our ecosystem so not bad but look oh, six million hopefully uh that works out well for justin uh son look another crypto punk this one i really like this is an nft that i would love to own i mean i don't have five million dollars not even you know remotely close to that but this is an NFT that I would be super keen on. This also uh, a crypto punk. I would like to own a crypto punk. Uh, another crypto punk we can see there. Stay free. Another one. Uh, pretty interesting one. Save thousands of lives. Crypto punk. So a major a lot of crypto punks in here. But the last one that I wanted to look at. This is another one I'd be interested in. So the World Wide Web source code and the first uh, Twitter. Uh, ever Twitter I don't know what you call them tweets that's it yeah <laughs> I was gonna say Twitter handles but it's not a Twitter handle the first ever tweets uh, tweet that was put up so it's some very very interesting NFTs and these are ones that I think will hold uh, value for you know a very long time it's not to say they can't go down in value at any stage but over the longer term I think they'll do quite well and hold their value I, I don't know who bought the first tweet uh, I'm guessing Jack was probably the one that sold it but yeah an interesting one but definitely the world wide web source code that is one that i just thought yeah that is sick i mean 
you know, this has changed everything. From the day this was written, our world has changed, you know, for the better or worse, depending on, you know, who you are, but this is awesome. And if I had $5 million, I mean, if I only had $5 million, I wouldn't be buying this. <laughs> There's other things I would need. But if I had a spare $5 million, I would have been all over that in a heartbeat. Love that one right there. And some crypto punks. All right. Billboard calls out Alabama Senator for blocking the infrastructure bills, crypto amendments. So things are heating up, but I like that there's people or at least organizations now that are getting out there and actively trying to get the rest of the, you know, I want to say the community. The community is not the word I'm looking for. The rest of the population, yeah. I mean, you know, one thing in Alabama is probably not going to get the rest of the population on board, but it's a start. And so what it is, is it's the fight for future. A group of advocates that fight to ensure technology is a force of empowerment. And it started an initiative called the hashtag don't kill crypto campaign when the crypto cryptocurrency provision was added to the infrastructure bill. The campaign has purchased a billboard in Alabama which calls out US Senator uh, Richard Shelby for blocking an amendment to the infrastructure bill. If he had a got on board, the bill would have passed and then there would have been no issues, but he wanted more money on defense spending. Uh, he couldn't get that, so uh, he needed it. And we know I brought the story just yesterday. Again, I didn't bring the story, but I mentioned the story on my uh, channel yesterday that it's gone through another part without the uh, amendments being added. So it's looking like the bill might get passed as is. And again, then you have to take the word that, you know, Joe Biden and all his people aren't going to take it uh, the way that it's kind of been written. They're going to make their own interpretation of it. But geez, I'd be very careful trusting a politician. I can tell you right now. All right, again, still not feeling super great. And you can probably hear in my voice. I'm a little bit croaky and everything. So stay safe. We've got the weekend coming. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. But if you are, congratulations. You've outperformed the market. And I'll see you next time.